Hi, this is Andrea Earle with a short tutorial on how I use quizzes with my students in Canvas. I start by logging into my quizzes account. I can search for any topic I want in the search bar. I could look for fractions, I could look for Greek history, Latin roots, anything I want. When I find the lesson I want, I go ahead and click on it to open it up. The first thing I do is I want to give my students a pre-assessment. This is based on the Fast and the Curious Edu Protocol. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a live quiz with my students. I'm going to pick a classic quiz so the students work at their own pace. I select, I can go through the um, settings, unlimited attempts, I don't care how many times they do it. I don't need name factory, I want the kids to use their own name. Uh, I do want the kids to see the answers, and I do want them to be able to review the questions post game. For my pre-assessment, I'm not gonna use power-ups, which give the kids extra, extra opportunities. I'm not going to use the timer because time doesn't really matter. Uh, it's more on accuracy. Uh, I do want to show the leaderboard, shuffle questions, uh, shuffle answer options. I don't want to use a redemption question. And I'll go ahead and show the memes because that's kind of fun. And in fact, I, all right, I will leave the leaderboard up there. I hit continue. This is going to start my quiz. Now I can share it by sharing my screen, or I prefer to click on the link copy link and i'm going to paste this link into the chat i uh, don't use the canvas option that doesn't really work unless you have the free version of canvas then i start the game oops there's no players so obviously it's not going to go but i start the game the kids play now kids can get to the game by clicking on the link in the chat or a lot of them will put the code in on their phone using the quizzes app. All right now that we have a student enrolled, we can start the game. Now the questions pop up on the student screen and you can keep track of how they're doing based on the leaderboard. I don't show this screen to students. Kids get extra points if they uh, have a winning streak and you'll be able to see it as you go. Okay, so you can see here how I've made a mistake in the game and it shows the wrong answer. When the game is done, I can just click end game. Even if there's a couple stragglers, it's all right, I'll end the game. And I can now look at the accuracy of the students. Yay, I'm first place. <laughs> all right, so, but I can look at accuracy and I can see, okay, maybe this is the most missed question, um, but it'll give me a full report. 100% of the students got this question right. I don't need to talk about it, but I do need to talk about this one. All right, that's step one. Then the next thing I do is I go ahead, I'm going to exit this game, and I'm going to go back into it, and it's in my library because I saved it. And now I'm going to assign it to students to practice on their own because these are vocabulary words, and I want them to be comfortable with them. So this time I'm going to click Assign Homework. I can pick a due date, and you definitely want to push it pretty far off, give them a lot of time to work on it. Uh, you can um, allow unlimited attempts. Do you want to validate, or I actually want um, in-game answers, because I want them to see the correct uh, vocabulary words that match the definitions. If you want, you can turn on power-ups. I, again, I don't like the timer. You can add leaderboard, shuffle answers, shuffle questions, show memes, play music. The kids can turn off the music if they don't like it. And then I'm going to hit continue. And again, it's going to give me a link. So this is what I post in Canvas. I copy the link and I go to my Canvas class. I go to my uh, modules and I'm putting this in my, in my uh, training class. 
Now, if you really want to be fancy, you can actually embed quizzes inside your Canvas assignment. When you're in quizzes and you have that link that you're going to copy and share with students, go ahead and copy that link. Then open an iframe generator. I'll put a link to my favorite in the show notes. Paste it in here. You can generate a preview and you can look at what the uh, what it's going to look like. It's kind of short. So I'm going to go back to the iframe generator and I can make it longer. So this is the width. 600 seemed fine, but maybe I'm going to change it down to 800 or up to 800. Make it a little longer. If I hit preview again, you can now see that it's definitely longer and you're going to be able to see more of the uh, more of the, the lesson. So come back, hit generate. I'm going to copy this code. I'm going to go back to my assignment. Oops, go back to my assignment, select edit. You'll notice at the bottom of your, uh oh, there we go. You notice at the bottom of your rich content editor are these two little less than, greater than, which really is your switch to HTML. Come down here, put an enter in, and then paste in the code. If you hit the uh, switch again, you will see quizzes pops in. And since I've already done part of this quizzes, it, can, it shows me where I am in the process. Make sure you go down to the bottom and hit save. I'm now going to publish, and I'll show you what it looks like from the student point of view. So we're down, we're published. I'm now going to jump over to my settings and see the kids have all the settings that they can turn on and off the sound if they want to. When I go to my modules, I slide down and I find my quizzes, my robotics and animation vocabulary. Here it is. And it pops right in. Now it's already recognizes me, so I could keep going with my attempt or start over. And that's all you have to do. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.